right, good evening, Source Nation, and welcome to SRN Live Television. I am your host, author Kimberly McLemore, and thank you for tuning in tonight to my show, The Author's Corner. Tonight, we have another amazing show for you, but before we can move any further, we need to thank the sponsors. And so the first sponsor that we have is Zulina Health, Wellness, and Fitness, Meet My Types Matchmaking, Renovations, and New Covenant of Praise Worship Center. But also before we bring on our lovely guests, I want to just take a couple of minutes and tell you a little bit about myself. I'm the author of How to Be a Success by Just Being You and the memoir, Deception of a Heart, A Real Look into Domestic Violence. I'm also the founder and CEO of the Women's Small Business Initiative, LLC, the host of the podcast, Your Resource for Success, the founder of the author, Kimberly M. McLemore, LLC, and the host of this new and awesome, amazing radio TV show called The Author's Corner. And I want to just talk just a few minutes here about the reason why I decided to do the show as well. And it's because I wanted to provide an awesome platform for new and existing authors, giving you all the opportunity to promote your books, talk about some of your speaking events and engagements, other engagements you may have. And of course, we want to know where to purchase that book. So now let me move into telling you just a little bit more about our special guest, her name is author, Pastor Hosetta Irvin. Pastor Irvin is the pastor of what? That's W-H-T-T, Worshiping, Hoping, and Trusting Together Ministries, and author of Declare Your Way Blessed. Pastor Irvin believes in empowering and uplifting her congregation and her community beyond the call of the pulpit. So without further ado, Source Nation, please help me welcome my special guest, Pastor Hosetta Irvin. Welcome, uh, Pastor Irvin. How are you this evening? I am great. I am doing great, Kimberly. Thank you so much. Well, it is a pleasure to have you on. What I would like for you to do is, you know, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. And then before we jump in, of course, into the conversation about your book, you know, give us some background about who you are, where you come from, and then we'll dive into the, the, the main reason why we're here this evening. Okay, great, Kimberly. Yes, um, my name is um, Pastor Hosetta Irvin, and um, I'm originally from Taylor, Texas, small town um, up here in Texas. I live here in Colleen. I'm married uh, to Milton Irvin, I have one biological son and a wonderful stepson, Brian Irvin. And I am the pastor of What Ministries, Worshiping, Hoping, and Trusting Together. I am also the founder of BKS, B Building Kingdom Sisters, and just recently a uh, new author as well. Um, I've been pastoring now for about 10 years. Um, I, I love going beyond the pulpit, beyond other than the four walls with brick and mortar. I love to get out and evangelize. I'm kind of mm -hmm. like an evangelistic pastor. Um, just, I just love people. I love talking. I, I love interacting. But most of all, I love saving souls for the kingdom of God. That's my heartbeat and my passion. All right. So, okay. Let's, let's talk a little bit about how you got into doing the ministry. Um, give us a little history of what's going on with you. And before we, like I said, talk a little bit about the book, because it's obvious that, you know, yeah. we talked a, little, a few minutes earlier and there's some things right. that have gone through in life. And we all know sometimes the things that we deal with in life is what makes us stronger and makes us move forward into wanting to share what we've been through with others so that they can have, see their journey in the light that you're seeing yours. So tell me a little bit more about that and talk to our Force Nation listeners about that. Okay, great, great, Kimberly. Yes, um, the how I began to start pastoring was my sister, my oldest sister, Esther Martin, uh, Prophetess Esther Martin. Uh, she birthed what ministries out, out of her vision. Um, and she said that God has showed her that I was supposed to be the pastor. And it came through you know, her misery and the things that she was going through with her spouse. And uh, originally she um, birthed it and she turned it over to me in, over in, in 2007. And I, I began to pastor it. I didn't begin to walk in my calling right away. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't really want to pastor. I, I thought maybe she missed the mark. <laughs> right. <laughs> because I said, um, I don't believe that I, I can pastor anyone. I, I told her I would do all of the administrative stuff, would do the administrative work. But not only was she coming through a bad ordeal, through a, a bad divorce, my, I, my myself, I was also coming off of one myself. And so just with everything going on in, in our lives between the both of us, we have mm -hmm. a real close connection as her being my oldest sister and a mother figure. 
um, the ministry came through and, and what ministries is birthed. And finally, through the help of my spiritual father, Apostle Gregory K. Ransaw, I decided he gave me a little push too. Uh, <laughs> of course, God pushed me off the cliff and he, he pushed me even further mm-hmm. to go ahead and step out on my calling. And from then on, I've been running and hadn't looked back ever mm-hmm. since. Wow. But like I said, it's amazing how when we talk that, and I'm listening to you where you're saying about, it's usually that journey, that, that one mm-hmm. thing that pushes people over the edge. And that what I'm hearing that with you and your sister having something going on at the same time that she was able to pass the bar over and said, this is really meant for you. I yes. think that to me is, is a beautiful moment between the two of you. So going through that process, like you said, you fought it. And with you mm-hmm. fighting that, you know, what made you, I mean, beyond the fact that, we, you know, God pushed you over the edge, what really was, was within you to say, you know what, I need to share my journey with everybody else? Um, I, I began to really think um, hard uh, to, to share my journey. Uh, what I got actually birthed another book, but I haven't uh, fit, quite finished that one yet called Born to Rule. That was supposed to be the initial one, but mm-hmm. God has a way of doing things. But throughout that, that's what I really wanted to talk about and throughout the journey what happened was that uh, I experienced the uh, divorce of 12 years and I had a real real bad time with it lost some Mm self-esteem so I really wanted that's why I got the um the counseling and coaching business with BKS called building kingdom sisters I really want to share this passion with every other woman that has went through divorce that has that they could really make it and get through so that's what really birthed the passion up out of me to really go out and uh, build sisters up and let them know that they can make it because I was a single mom and went through a, that ordeal. Okay. So yeah, I like the fact that you have the other side of your business, which was the, the blossoming part of what you do. So yes. if you're in, in that portion of the business, you're dealing with women who have gone through the same scenarios that you have gone through. So just talk to just briefly a little bit about what that part of the business does to help these other women before we go into um, talking about the book? Well, it, it helps them uh, basically step out on their purpose uh, and truly believe that they can do it, that they do have the kingdom on the inside of them. That's one reason I, the, I birthed the BKS, uh, where God let me birth it through me, because I want women to know that you can do it and you can make it and you can actually get back to the place where God has created you to be. Mm -hmm. And so that, that is where the heartbeat comes in. I really go in and I let them know that you can do basically what the word says, all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens you. So I just give them hope in in this hopeless world. So I let them know that you don't have to be hopeless, that you can push through. Right. And like we talked about briefly earlier a little bit, how you talked about it's taken you a long time to get to back to being who you yes. are. You know, yes. these things that you went through and realizing that this is the better place to be. So like I said, being able to share those experiences with others and make, make people understand. And I and believe me, I understand exactly how you feel when it comes down to, you know, when we're talking about going through certain tragedies in our life. And then we, u- we use those as tools and resources to, to get ourselves back to where we should be. Uh, you know, yes. Being who we are you know, and it, but it takes time it, and nothing happens yes. overnight. And then one thing happens after another and you start developing this phenomenon that, you know what, the world needs to hear this. People need to understand that there is life after the tragedy. As we always say, there's that light at the end of the tunnel. And yes. if you are, you, you know, you, you're back to who you are and now you're sharing that. So now yes. we're going to get into this book really good, but I just want to say, so if you're just tuning in, and you're listening live to the Author's Corner with me, author Kimberly McElwain. Of course, I have my beautiful special guest tonight. Her name is Pastor Josetta Irvin. And now we're going to talk more about the book. So why don't you introduce the book to our listeners? And then, you know, you can pick and choose what excerpt you like to read. And let's have a conversation about that. Okay, great. Yes, um, I wrote uh, Declare Your Way Blessed. Uh, basically, I wrote it to just help God's children, the children of God, um, stop declaring bad things over their lives. Um, oftentimes we declare so many negative things over our lives. We're speaking about our finances, negative, our relationships, our health, our emotions. And so, uh, the, the enemy had had a foothold in my life for me speaking so negative over my life. 
and I really didn't realize that I was speaking so uh, death into my life mm -hmm. uh, because the word tells us that, you know, we, we either condemned or justified by our words. And so I just basically, God just basically arrested me right where I was in my thought, thought pattern. And so I just began, he downloaded these 11 declarations in my, in my spirit. And uh, I begin to say them after every sermon. And from there, uh, that's how Declare Your Way got birthed. Wow. Wow. So can you tell me what those declarations were? And then can you choose the one you want to share with us tonight? And then talk a little bit more about the reason why you chose that. Okay. Yes. Um, the 11 declarations are that um, I delight myself in the Lord. I am blessed and not cursed. I am a hearer, a reader, and a doer of the word. I am healed, set free, and redeemed. And I can do all things with God. I commit my life to God. There is safety and peace in the word of God. The plans for my life are good and not evil. Everything I need is in the word. The grass withered and the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen to so that. those are the 11 mm -hmm. that uh, God gave me. Amen. I can hear it coming out of you, Pastor, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was like, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. Exactly. So, so which excerpt would you like to share with us this evening? Wow. I, I would have to say the delight part, which is the first declaration. Psalms 37, 4 tells us to delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So I would definitely would, would like to share out of that one. All right. So go right on ahead. You want me to go right ahead? Okay. Go right on no in. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. No so um, in this particular declaration, again, in each declaration, I break some down. God give, gave me scripture uh, to help you go along the way in it. But this declaration, I think it really stuck out to me. I love all of the declarations because God gave them to me. But to delight, to actually begin to delight, when I, I said in this, this declaration that when you delight in something, you think about it as uh, it's an enjoyment and you just really love it. I, I made a, a metaphor in here about when you eat chocolate, you know how ladies love chocolate, mm -hmm. uh, where you just really delight yourself in that thing and it just gets to be so, so good. And I've never known anything like uh, the feeling of delighting myself in God. And I think that when you decide to delight yourself in God, it just changes you inside out. And so in this whole thing, it said that in Psalms 48, it says, I delight to do thy will. I think I had to really get to that point uh, to delight to do God's will. Because again, I told you, I didn't want to pastor. I mm -hmm. didn't want to be responsible for people's souls. Um, so in this particular passage, it's just telling you in this declaration that God will shake you if you really want to be shaken, mm -hmm. if you really want to delight yourself in the word, um, you just have to get in it. You just have to get in it and begin to really delight yourself in the word of God. And the spirit of God was letting me know that I needed to go to another level. And that's why I love this declaration so much because when I began to really delight myself in the Lord, uh, there was a, a difference. You could mm -hmm. tell a difference, the fire, uh, that would come out in the passion, that would come out in my preaching. Um, all of that was really different. And I just continued throughout uh, these last couple of years to really delight myself in, in the word of God. It's just like the way King David did it. Even though the trials and the things that he went through, he would always bring his heart back to God. He would always make sure that he was delighting himself in, in the word and in God. And so that's basically what the first declaration entailed. And it goes a little bit deeper and mm -hmm. tells us about focusing that, you know, you, in order to change your life, you have to start focusing. You have to make God an important part in your life. And so I delight myself in the Lord is, is one of those declarations that I really find pleasure in because that's where it's at. I think that's why God gave me that one first, because if you never begin to delight yourself in God, it's going to be kind of hard to, to know that uh, you can commit your life to him if you don't delight in it. If you don't have any delight in doing it, it's hard to commit to him. Right. It's hard, you know, it's hard for you to think that he got a good plan for your life mm -hmm. if you don't delight 
in him first. So I think that delight myself in the Lord was one of those that really, really stood out in the book. Okay. And, and I agree. I was sitting here just continuing listening to what you're saying. And the thing, the thing that comes to me, comes to my mind is that as you're saying, putting God first, you know, mm-hmm. realizing that you can do nothing truly without him. And we all know that we've gone off that beaten path and think that we can do better without him, you know, and, and knowing that the focus is already there. Our paths are already set for us, but you know, when you put him in your daily life um, from the beginning to the middle to the end of your day, to the time you go to sleep, you know, that things seem to go better. And so yes. I like the way that you're talking about, you know, doing the, uh, the delight, the, the using the word delight seems to be much more pleasant for people sometimes instead of feeling like, you know, they have to do other things or feel like they got to jump in with all fours. It kind of gives them that platform to move slowly, but also realize that he's always been there without yes. having to feel like, you know, you got to, I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for. Obligated. Obligated, right. Yes. And thank you. And you're right, because a lot of times people feel that if they're obligated to do something, then they're not willing to really do it from their heart. Right. Yeah. That's how delighted did me. That's how it set me on fire so much and and when i begin to delight myself in the lord things changed on the inside of me i I found myself not getting so emotional Mm -hmm. uh, getting so angry um, because most of my time was delighting myself in the word and delighting myself in the lord so when you delight into something just like you dive into that ice cream or 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 that chocolate (laughs) cake right (laughs) you're right yeah we sit there and we you know we just sit there and think man this is the best thing since you know forever And that exactly. one moment, you know, changes mm-hmm. us forever. That just to enjoy that piece of cake or like yes. ice cream and like some chocolate, those things that we sometimes will favor over anything else. And, right. And that we'll put exactly. that effort and time into. So absolutely, I, I agree with that. Um, yes. I guess uh, one of my other questions is that, so when you're uh, with your book, do you utilize your book as a resource and a tool for your clientele that you have um, at the, uh, or the BK? BKS, Building mm-hmm. Kingdom Sisters. Yes. yes. Yes, I do. I use it as a tool because uh, I believe that if you can, again, start speaking positive things over your life and start, uh, you know, knowing that you are everything that God created you to be. And I, I believe these 11 declarations will get you somewhere to start. And so, yes, I do offer this book to all of my clients that I begin to coach. Excellent. Excellent. Because I think that's a perfect way it's just a good sounding board for your clientele yes. to know. And I think it's the best part I love about uh, what you're doing and then having your clientele is that people can see that you have been through it. So you're not just a standing board saying, hey, do this, do this, do this. Right. And then not, you know, you can absolutely say, I've been here. I know mm-hmm. what you're going through and I can teach you to get through that process. Even though we all know there are certain things in life that will work better for the other person, but giving them the tools and resources so they can make it work around what's more comfortable for them is an absolute. Yes. So the, the, those are things yes. uh, that you're doing, how you're tying the two together. And, and then here you fought your way from saying, I don't want to do this. This is not who I am. <laughs> I'm not going right. to be in the forefront. And now you are in the forefront and, and sharing that with everybody else. So yes. um, quickly show me the book, you know. Show sure. The book. sure. Yeah, look at that nice. Yeah, see, yeah. everybody, it's real. It's real. <laughs> it's real. I always like to make yeah. sure everybody gets that opportunity. To know that we yes, do it this is. as authors. The book is real, and then we'll yes, we're definitely going to talk in a few minutes about where you can, they can purchase that in a few minutes. Yes. Uh, but before we go on, we are definitely getting close to the end of the show. I can't believe it's almost eight fifty. Yeah, wow! So like wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, really? You know, when you're always having fun, right? But before, right. before we actually finish, um, do you have anything else you would like to share with the listeners? You know, any encouraging words or any moments that you think that you would like to share this evening before we move forward on some other things? Um, I would just like to encourage the listeners to really um, mainly focus on a relationship. I think that oftentimes we really focus on the whole religious thing, Um I think if people really dive into this whole thing of getting a relationship with God, I think their life will be so much uh, better. Of course, you're going to have those trials and tribulations. You're going to go through your crisis. 
uh, one thing I've noticed as, as a pastor and as a spiritual life coach that, you know, when I begin to go through trials and tribulations, you know, with my relationship, it's not that religious thing. It's not me trying to just make you come into brick and mortar, but mm -hmm. that relationship, if people can get that intact and figure out the relationship with God, man, I'm, I'm, I just know that their life will change for the better because the spirit of God and the word of God changed my life for the better. And that is one reason why I share with everyone, every opportunity I get, every platform, um, if God wants me to go on it, I'm going to share the good news with everyone. Mm -hmm. And you're right. You know, that, uh, you talked a little bit earlier of, of similarity, um, about the fact that trying to, that's always that you, preaching is not about just being in the brick and mortar. You talk yes. about that. And I think that's good that people need to understand is, you know, sitting in the four walls, doesn't make you the better person or doesn't help you always it's it's about exactly. outside of those four walls you know you're, you're getting the word so now it's time to utilize that outside in, in the real world and i like how you bring that up because a lot of times i think that people do have that misconception that they think hey if i'm sitting here in church every sunday or every tuesday wednesday thursday whatever the case may be <laughs> that you know that that's really the full amount that they need to do and not realizing that it, it goes within your whole life you know mm -hmm. your lifestyle it's, and i say it's not it's no different i guess what i think about when we're exercising like we kind of talked a little bit about that how oh you know <laughs> things we don't like about ourselves but at the same token it took you time to to start someplace and it takes you time to get to the other half right so exactly it's like you know walking across the street you start from one place you get to the other so it's no different i think than what you're trying to teach people when it comes to understanding and declaring their purpose and knowing who they are as individuals and having that relationship with God. So I think that is yes. beautiful what you are what you have are doing and accomplishing Thank you. And, and congratulations to you for what you have accomplished. And Thank you. You definitely want to keep moving forward on that. But before we actually finish anything on the show, what um I'd like you to talk about if you have any events coming up and then of course how we can find you on your social media platforms and of course where we can purchase the book great great uh yes i do have a workshop coming up on august the 9th it is called is called is there any hope for me um it's going to be on zoom not in brick and mortar on august the 9th at seven o'clock central standard time um you can find it on the flyer on my my facebook page you can follow me at Josetta irvin at facebook or Josetta irvin the author was that our life coach? Was that our urban life coach as well? And um, that's pretty much all. I'm not a really on any other social media platform. I have okay. Instagram, but I just really just focus on one platform for right now. And okay. um, that's pretty much it. What I got coming up. All right. So, and where can we purchase your book from? You can purchase it on Amazon. Um, you can also purchase it through me, uh, through Facebook as well so amazon it is definitely available on amazon and oh. you can purchase it through me <laughs> all right so you do the autograph copies when you purchase, you purchase yes you, right yes <laughs> yes <laughs> i do <laughs> those are always the special ones and the better ones is when you get those autograph yes copies, right yes they have been loving the autograph ones more than amazon <laughs> it, it, yeah exactly i mean amazon is great i mean we all obviously yes. love amazon because it definitely reaches further but i always definitely use that as a hey i'm an autograph you're not going to get that autograph right. on amazon right <laughs> right <laughs> so, <laughs> awesome so is there any other last words that you would like to share with our listeners tonight i just thank thank god for this opportunity i thank you for the opportunity to allow me to step out on this platform and and use it as a tool to share the word of God and to share, um, declare your way blessed with people. And I pray that they purchase the book and begin to declare their way blessed. All right. But if they would like to reach it out to you, you have phone number that they could reach. If there's somebody who's on her list and said, hey, not everybody loves social media. So is there um, anything they, they can contact they, you? They can reach me on my email as well at um, OzettaIrvin um, at gmail.com. You can reach me there as well. And um, I will get back with you as well. All right. Okay. Well, again, thank you so much for being on our show. It has thank been you. such a pleasure. And I definitely would like to have you come back. So I'd like to learn more about what you're doing. <laughs> and of course, when you get that other book out, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely need to have you come back on for that. 
of course, I, you know, before we can leave off the show, I definitely, like I said, want to thank you all for coming on. And to my listeners, the Source Nation listeners, you know, Dr. Pastor Hosetta Irvin has been phenomenal. I hope you all have enjoyed this evening with us as much as I have enjoyed her. And of course, you know, we talked about her singing earlier, but she was a <laughs> thing for me tonight, y'all. So we're just going to have to buy this. <laughs> No. <laughs> it's just our little our little thing between us, right? Yes, yes. No singing, no singing, Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Source Nation. Um, we have come to the end of our show, and with us, of course, we have author, Pastor Rosetta Irvin, and of course, she like I said, she has some amazing things to share. And then, of course, if you're interested in being on this show, all you need to do is send me an email with a short bio, your cover of your uh, book. And of course, a professional picture of yourself to Kimberly M. McLemore at gmail.com. That's K I M B E R L Y M McLemore at gmail.com. And of course, you can follow me on all the social media platforms Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, the Women's Small Business Initiative LLC YouTube channel. But until then, you all have a wonderful weekend. And again, thank you, Pastor, for coming on. Thank you so much, Kimberly. You're welcome. And until next week, have a good evening. Good night.